So, it is Thursday, December 31st, 2020. And I know it's been almost two weeks. It'll be two weeks tomorrow morning since I said I would record this. But been enjoying my vacation. Uh, I did spend quite a bit of time looking at my old videos. And I'm not going to get a little emotional. But I, I definitely was so proud of all the time and effort that went into uh, what I accomplished in 2020 with my fitness. And this video, I'm listing the top five reasons I feel like I was able to be successful this time around versus prior. So let's get into the first reason. So the number one reason, and this may come as a surprise to people, but I'm definitely going to go with prioritization. I made work and my fitness my top two priorities in life. And I know people will say, oh, what about your wife? What about your family? It doesn't mean that those are inconsequential, but I have failed at fitness so many times and I'm not claiming victory now. I achieved my goal. I'll declare victory when I've been under 15% body fat for 10 years. But to be able to break the cycle a failed weight loss attempt time and time and time again. Uh, I've been on a seesaw with my weight for 18 years, pretty much. Nin I should say 19, really. I stopped playing basketball in 2001 from, I'd say, I can't remember the exact year, maybe 91, maybe 92. When I started playing, I immediately shed a lot of weight and I stayed incredibly fit until I stopped playing in 2001. And I remember I was about 230, 235 at that point. I ballooned up to 260. I remember I felt like a blimp at 260. I had never been that weight in my life in 2002. And I remember I lost a bunch of weight that summer, but I don't, I don't want to go back. I really want to focus on why this is a priority. All of that frustration from failed attempt time and time again really made me feel like I had to make this the number one priority. I had to have the mindset that this wasn't something I can do later. I couldn't skip a workout. I couldn't skimp on my diet. I had to make this number one. Uh, there were times when my wife was like, oh, let's go out to eat or for the pandemic or <clears throat> let's order in. And I was like, no, I shut it down every time. I really made this a priority unlike any other time in my life. It wasn't some, it was a big deal if I missed a single workout and I definitely missed workouts, but mostly due to fatigue um, because I pushed myself so hard and I never felt guilty if I just needed a rest day. What I felt guilty was if I just didn't feel like working out because I was laying on the couch and didn't feel like expending energy or something like that. Um, and I really fought hard to fight that. And I really fought hard to make sure I held myself accountable with my diet. Um, you know, this channel, if you look, I had a hundred and almost 60 videos in 11 months. I mean, I was incredibly consistent and I made this the number one priority in my life right alongside work. Those two came first. Uh, I spent a lot of time with my wife, a lot of time with my daughter, but I'm not even going to delve off into the personal side. I just, I think making this such a priority really led to seeing the success I did in terms of making my year-end goal. Um, there was nothing I was going to put above this outside of work. And if I was doing something I was enjoying, if I was comfortable laying on the couch, if I was sleeping and I didn't feel like getting up at 5, 5.30, it didn't matter. This had to be done. And I really feel like that was the number one reason that overarches everything that follows on this list because everything that follows on this list uh, was able to occur because I made this such a priority. So that is definitely my number one for 2020. My number two is nutrition. In every other bout, of 
trying to lose weight, I really only focus on one aspect in terms of nutrition, and that is counting calories. And I really made this a huge focal point of this year, uh, specifically with the reading and the learning, because I knew almost nothing of nutrition coming into this year. I have worked with personal trainers from my time in sports. I've gotten a lot of instruction. I have a lot of friends who are heavy into lifting, running, these sorts of things. And while those are important, um, I've developed my own personal philosophy of this year. Uh, and I look at it in terms of three pillars. The first of which and the most important, your size, your weight, the amount of fat stored on your body is going to be a function of your nutrition. Your body composition, strength, ability to move, that's going to be a function of resistance training and your cardiovascular health is really a function of the cardio that you do. Obviously, my key goal was to shrink in terms of size to reduce my amount of body fat. Um, and in all of the learning and all of the reading I did, um, it just became apparent to me how important nutrition is. Uh, the single most useful piece of information I took, and it's no surprise to anyone that's followed this channel, is reading the obesity code. That really changed my mindset. And I lost more weight and body fat from the time I finished that book in late July, early August through the start of November. So you can say basically August, September, and October. I lost more weight in those three months than I did in the previous six. And it was very much due to switching the whole foods, thinking about the timing of my eating and incorporating 24 hour fasts into my protocol. That really supercharged my results and it's given me incredible confidence. Um, but really focusing on nutrition, I think was the big difference between prior attempts where I was just trying to do a calorie counter. I'd get some, you know, um, some formula off the internet as to what my calories should have been. Um, I never even really tried to track macros. I, I just totally focused on calories in every previous attempt. And after reading the obesity code, I understand why I was failing. Um, learning about the interdependency of calories in versus calories out and understanding that they are dependent, not independent of each other. Um, just understanding the hormonal response to food. Um, just understanding a lot of different facets that go into this and recognizing that my body is not a calorie scale. And I mean, an example I always give in 2019, when I was using the calorie counting method, I started seeing a dietitian and she told me something like 3,400 calories a day is what I should do in terms of my daily caloric intake. There were days where I would stay comfortably within that. I'd have McDonald's for dinner, uh, a double quarter pounder with cheese meal, fries, and then I'd have a diet Pepsi or diet Coke. And it's like 12, 1300 calories. And uh, I'd finish the day and I'd, you know, I'd run. So um, I'd burn like a thousand calories. So I'm like, oh, you know, I've got... 5,000 calories to play with today. So yeah, I can have McDonald's and that's not gonna work. And I, I completely, completely changed the way I eat. Um, I know a six mile run for me, I was doing a 10K a few times a week. It's like 12, 1300 calories that I burn according to my heart rate monitor. And I add that to the 3300. So, you know, I'd eat McDonald's, I'd eat Subway, and I think I'm comfortably within this range and just shedding that mindset has been an absolute game changer. Um, I, I don't pig out. I'm very focused on the quality of foods I eat. And I really think that behind the prioritization is the most important factor in terms of me being successful this time around. The number three reason is developing a learning mindset. And what I mean by that is I stopped doing what I've always done, whether you're talking nutrition, whether you're talking cardio health, whether you're talking lifting, 
and I just took a huge influx of information on every aspect of this, um, even on the mindset. You know, shout out to Bricks Fitness. Uh, that was a big help because uh, that helped me work past the guilt. But I just constantly, constantly took in information, and I have really transformed in terms of the amount of knowledge that I have in terms of how the human body works. Uh, I'm by no means an expert. I'm comparing myself to a year ago today in terms of what I know, but I only have scratched the surface. This It's going to take years to get to the point where I feel like I've got a great handle on this. I've learned a lot of fundamentals, a lot of basics in terms of my nutrition, in terms of you know, my running, in terms of my lifting, uh, in terms of calisthenics, uh, and just in terms of the mental mindset and letting go of the guilt um, of making a mistake, of having a setback, of not seeing progress. But I made sure that I didn't just keep trying to fit the round peg into the square hole like in prior years and just keep doing the whole calorie counting thing and doing my old lifting routines and and counting, you know, the amount of exercise calories and saying I'm creating a deficit. It really isn't that simple. And, you know, I'm excited about what I'm going to learn in 2021. Um, but, I mean, I spent a lot of Friday and Saturday nights watching YouTube videos on Zone 2 training, on lifting techniques, on nutrition. Um, I read at least one book a year, uh, one book a quarter, but I, I, I know I far exceeded that because... I did my nutrition course again at the start of the year. I did. I read a book on um, plant-based diets. I did the obesity code, and right after that, I went into the guide of fasting. I read a book called 159 by Phil Maffetone on training. So, so you can say basically I did a book every other month on Audible. Uh, I'd go for my walks in the middle of the day for an hour, and I'd listen, and then I'd go on a walk after work or in the evening, and listen for another hour. So I was constantly, constantly taking in information. Who knows, God who knows how many hours I spent on YouTube watching, but developing a learning mindset, keeping an open mind, using my body as a science experiment, as Briggs would say, and just learning what works and tracking it over time. So uh, I think that was a huge reason why I was able to stop making the same mistakes and actually get ahead this time around. My fourth reason, and this one has some overlap with the first, is consistency. But I will explain why I see a difference. There have been plenty of times where I've made this a priority, I didn't get the results, and I quit. This time, I focused on consistency and I actually sought out sources and I sought out re-encouragement for managing through the difficult times. You, it's easy to make it a priority as a New Year's resolution. Who knows how many billions of people, uh, as we sit here on December 31st, are saying, you know what, next year I'm going to do it and it'll be a priority. That's why gym memberships fly through the roof in January. But by July, you know, where are you with this? And I had the mindset that I was not going to quit, even if the results weren't there. I mean, I give myself credit for never quitting from 2019. I mean, you could almost look at what I've done as an extension from what I started in late 2018 going into 2019. Um... I had every reason to just accept that I was going to be 300 to 320 for the rest of my life. When I started this process back in January, I did not believe I was going to accomplish this, but I was determined to work even through my own, my own fears, my own doubts. Um, I, I've said it multiple times on this channel. I didn't think I was going to do this. I haven't been under 250 pounds since 2002. And if you go and look at my weigh-ins from from March and April and May, um, you could see how frustrated I was. I had set these, uh, I had set these aggressive goals early in the year, and I was prepared to work through the frustration and not quit. Um, Bricks, I'm saying this dude's name a million times, has a great saying. 
but he said when he, he went through a similar process, he was overweight pretty much all of his life. And in 2013, he was able to go from 360 to about 210, although he said it happened over three years, which is by coincidence, not by purpose, uh, about the same timeline. I'm expecting this to take. He said, I didn't stop failing. I just stopped quitting. And I had that mindset. I said to myself, even if I only get to 280 pounds, do you know what? I'll be that much better off. And if it takes me five, six years to do this, fine. If I can't get past 270, 280, I'll be the fittest 270, 280 pound man in the world. And I just had the mindset that I was going to work through the plateaus. I was going to work through the difficult times. Um, it's easy to give up on yourself. And this is why, you know, there have been a lot of friends who have asked me when they've seen I finally kind of was able to break through, what have I done? And one of the first things I tell them is to focus on something you can do over an extended period of time. And I say this, and I know it goes in one ear and out the other, but you need to be doing something you could be doing a year from now, not what you can do for the next two to three weeks and burn yourself out. I say that over and over. And I say that from personal experience. Um, these things sound so simplistic, but that comes from somebody who's been trying to crack through this barrier for 18 years. I mean, just, just let that sink in. I've been trying to crack through this barrier for 18 years and I've done it and I'm not finished. I'm not sitting here, you know, 7% body fat with a six pack. I'm by no means am I claiming victory. I'm claiming progress. I've lost 90 pounds since my heaviest back in September of 2017, but by no means am I declaring victory. Like, that's just foolish um, and that's just arrogance and, and those are two things that I don't like to be associated with but just having the mindset that I was going to work through the difficult times, the plateaus, the times I regained weight, the times I made mistake, I was going to brush it off and keep at it uh, and I was not going to give up and I think that was a huge part. The convergence of all these factors really helped me kind of learn and drive through the difficult times. So I would definitely say consistency and just having the mindset that I was going to work through the failure was a huge part of the reason I was able to succeed. And the final factor is patience. Um, and I know that can be easily construed to consistency, but when I say patience, I think about what I've done in the last year. And if I put up a video that says I lost 55 pounds in 12 months on YouTube, this isn't something that's going to be jaw dropping. And oh my God, like I see these videos pop up all the time. People losing, you know, Bricks himself has posted three videos in the last month. And when he started a transformation series, one guy lost 100 pounds in a year. One guy lost 125 pounds in nine months, and another guy lost uh, 260 pounds, although I think his was over two years. But what I've done isn't this jaw-dropping, oh my God, type of transformation. What I've lost is an average of about four pounds a month, and that's like nothing outrageous. Um, and I set a goal that I felt I could realistically achieve from, from a logical perspective. I, I had real doubts about myself achieving. I didn't think I would do it, as I said. Um, but when you sit there and say, you know what, I want to lose three to four pounds a month for 12 months. I say patience because it could have been very easy for me to just set some astronomical goal. You know, I want to lose 100 pounds. I want to have a six pack in a year. And I consider that a lack of patience because I've set those goals before and all they do is lead to frustration on my part. And so I set a very makeable goal. I set one that I felt would be significant process, progress, but wasn't impossible. It wasn't a one in a million type of story. It wasn't a 
you know, 10 million clicks on YouTube type of story. I said I wanted to get under 250 pounds. And when I was 305 pounds a year ago at this time, that's not like that's not some insurmountable, unbelievable amount of weight. Uh, it's 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 caught a lot of attention from my family and friends. But when you break it down and say, I'm going to lose four pounds a month for a year. Like that's not some moonshot, unbelievable type of goal. It's an achievable goal and it leaves you room for errors. It leaves you room for mistakes. Um, but it is it is a significant milestone. And I'm very happy that I was patient enough after all of my previous failed attempts to set a makeable but material goal. And I've got the same, a similar goal for next year, somewhere in the ballpark of 30 to 40 pounds. I don't have, I knew a year ago that 250 would not be the end state for me um, because I was 240, 251, 252 pounds back in 2013. And I was still about you know, 24, 25% body fat. So I knew that wasn't acceptable. Um, and I'm even higher this time. I see I've lost some muscle mass, but um, I knew that wouldn't be the end state. And I said to myself, I was going to give myself, last year I said to myself, I was going to give myself two years to do this. And I'm sticking to that and saying, I'm going to basically take two years to lose, what, go from 305 to 210. I thought it would be 275, I mean 225 but probably in the ballpark more of 210, maybe even 200, who knows, but trying to lose a hundred pounds in two years, that takes patience, but I recognize that setting an achievable goal and staying on track for it gave me a much better chance for success and having positive reinforcement as I see myself making progress to that goal. And I also kept in mind the mindset of I'm going to determine failure or success based on this number. And if I set a goal of a hundred pounds and I lose 40, I don't want to feel disappointed with that. So I also wanted to be patient in that regard to keep myself in a positive mind state through this. Um, so I really found that that having that patience and not trying to set some moonshot goal, some unachievable goal, I really feel like that played a lot in terms of success and it helped me, it gave me buffer as I was going through the learning process to start catching up later in the year. And now I, I can know I could lose a lot more than that if I were 300 today with the, mile, the, the, the knowledge that I have, but I feel like patience was a huge reason I was successful in 2020. So this is already an incredibly long video. Um, so I'm gonna stop it there, but you know, those are what I believe to be the core pillars of me being successful in 2020. And I feel like these factors will carry me forward to my end goal by the end of 2021. So last video of 2020, hugely successful year. Very, very proud of what I've done. Um, I'm so glad I did the YouTube because I have all of that footage of all the effort, all the time, um, just hearing myself talk through the frustration and continue to work through it. I'm just so proud of what I've been able to accomplish and I'm really looking forward to 2021. So for the last time in 2020, for Reed Fitness, signing off.